it is Sonia coming on live here, popping on real quick. I'm actually knocking out a sign today for a customer. And I thought I would pop on and share with you guys uh, the process I'm going through because it might inspire somebody out there, help answer some questions. And plus, I know I've been talking about a style of sign that I do. I share with you guys the effect that I do. I'm just using three colors of our paint. And I've been sharing with you kind of like the gray look of the barn wood. But today I'm going to go with a rustic style. Okay, my customer is looking for a rustic style, style sign for her friend who's a guy, right? Hey, Sonia. Hey, Sonia. Thank you for being the first person to say hello and jump on. I truly appreciate you today. How's everything going out there? Say hello as you pop on. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm Sonia, the owner of uh, the Junk Monkey Paint Company. We're based in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. And uh, we make here, me and the hubby, we make a beautiful brand of paint called Junk Monkey Paint where you don't have the prime or sand or strip. Um, you just kind of go bananas, right? Yeah. So I'm going to flip my camera here so you guys can see in just a second. All I'm doing right now is just kind of painting it with a brown base, okay? So I'm using our candy bar brown to give it a brown, um, brown back look, right? Just the foundation of the piece. So we have different um, colors. But one thing you'll find is that we have one black and we have one brown because it is the perfect brown for creating looks like this, right? Hey, stranger, Amy Lee. Nice to see ya. Deborah, Robin, Sharon, Linda. Oh, hey, guys. Knocking out a sign today for a customer. Figured I'd do it online, share with you guys my process, um, and maybe help you guys with a sign that you guys would like to create. Any sign makers on here today? Anybody who loves signs, right? Signs have become like the bumper sticker of our homes, right? Whatever we love, we find a sign that says it, or we know somebody who like would be the perfect person to own that sign, and we give it to them, right? So this is a saying, and I'll share it with you in just a second. I've never heard the saying that I'm gonna put on this sign before. We'll see if you guys have heard of it before. And, um, but apparently my customer's friend says this all the time, loves this saying, and uh, so we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna put it on the sign for him, right? Hey, Janet, Felicia, where's my cameraman? Oh, he is a paint-making man maniac. He's actually, I think he can hear me talking. Um, so if you guys wanna say hello, I'll shout out. But Matt's in the back. We are behind the scenes here. Of course, our shop is closed to the public today, but we don't stop, right? We don't stop working, and uh, so this is it, right? Our business is in a growth phase right now as the world finds out about the junk monkey. So we're working here today. He just got back from the post office with a ginormous delivery. And uh, so now I'm working on a sign and then, um, but I had to kind of work on the, uh, the postal part today, right? Because that's what come first. The post office closes at 4.30. So all about priorities, right? Amy Lee, you're so wonderful at everything. Oh God, I don't think so, girl. Practice, practice, practice. You can be good at anything you want. I am a firm believer if there's anything you want to do out there, you can put your mind to it and you can learn, girl, whatever it is you want to accomplish. All right, let's put this camera down here so you guys can watch what happens. Let's see here. Let's see here. Can you see it? So all I've got right now is a brown base, right? That's all I've got. I'm going to put some around the edge as well. I'm going to use a glaze on this and you're like, Sonia, how can you use a brown glaze over brown paint? Well, I'll show you what I do in just a second, okay? But um, I want to make sure I get the edges because if it's on a wall, you know, you can see the edges, right? Absolutely. Barnwood paint look. How do I do that, girl? Pay attention here. We will show you. So I've got a couple different tricks up my sleeves for when I do barnwood style. Um, and I've shared with you guys... One of my classic grays. Who's seen the, the gray barnwood effect that you can do that I've shared with you guys on here? This is um, a style that I do using browns, okay? Because there's brown barnwood and there's gray, right? But I'm going to be putting a vinyl um, quote on here. And the vinyl, which is like a sticker, it's in black. So I don't want it to be too dark that it overpowers the black wording. So, but first I start with a brown. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry this real fast with my heat gun. Hey, Karen. Oh, I know, girl. We've just been so, so, so busy. I still, I still keep popping on here whenever I can throughout the day. We're just, we're just working. We're working, man. We're working. So what are you up to today, to today, Karen? Tell us. Hey, Liz, how are you? Oh, thank you for sharing, Karen. Sharing, Karen. Thank you for sharing, Karen. I appreciate you doing that. That really helps us out. That's very kind of you to do, and to do, and hopefully it helps somebody out there as well. Plus, when you share it, it goes to your timeline. So if you ever need this tutorial again, a lot of times I do tutorials and you guys message me and say, where do I find that one? I know I saw you do this. 
If you share it, it shows up on your timeline and then just go watch it later. Hey Tiffany, coming to you from North Carolina. Oh, is it beautiful down there today, girl? This is the time of year, right? It starts to cool off. Did everybody go back home? Are you in one of those tourist spots where everybody has now gone back home and finally you get your little town to yourself? <laughs> We live in the Laurel Highlands, and uh, while we're in the countryside, and you have to take country roads to like connect to the main roads, we uh, we like have to go through some pretty major intersections. And uh, let me just tell you, during the summer months, it is like people everywhere. You just can't get from place to place, right? Yeah, absolutely, Amy. I love chatting with you guys. You guys are my peeps. Hey, my Nan is on here. Everybody say hello, Nan. Hey, Nan, how are you doing back? Back home in Newfoundland, back home in Canada, making a sign today. It's beautiful here. I'm going to tell you, it is absolutely gorgeous. I just closed my door. Number one, when my door is open, sometimes customers think I'm open and they come in. So it can be distracting when you're trying to get some stuff done. But number two, it's like there's so much traffic out there. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know where everybody's going to today, but it's beautiful. All right, this is like one of the beautiful, what feels like summer and fall kind of days, right? Hey, Nan, <laughs> I love it. You guys are awesome. You live in the country roads of West Virginia, Connie? Is that a place or you mean the country back roads of West Virginia? Sometimes I do cabinets down on the West Virginia border. Um, travel down that way, absolutely. It's funny how you get to know places that you've been, like the more times you go there. But when I first went down there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm like forever away from here, right? But now... I totally know where you are now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my sand block now. So I've totally just put, you guys I saw, you saw me use my um, chip brush. I went and put a beautiful candy bar brown all over it. Hey Ashley. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use my sand pad. And this kinda, this helps this process. Helps get rid of any gritties that need to fall off. It gets rid of any like brush hairs that might've been in the paint. Um, it just helps level off anything that might be sitting on top of your paint, right? Because I really want the brown to sink into the wood grain. And I'm okay with some distressing coming through because this is a rustic stuff sign for a man, right? Look how pretty that looks. Do you see that? This, this candy bar brown. This is a gorgeous look for um, if you're just doing this style here for signs because it's the perfect brown, right? And you see, do you see all the nice wood grain coming through? Because I sanded that to make it through. So when I'm out looking for signs, this is just done with a piece of pine, regular wood. And because it does, I don't really care how this looks because I'm gonna paint it and make it beautiful, right? But while I love to go with pieces that have knots and characters and dents and dings and probably the pieces that a lot of homeowners will leave on the shelf, um, when I'm working for vinyl, I try to go with the smoothest side because vinyl is a sticker and I want it to sit flat, right? So I'm going to do my best to find a piece that's nice and flat. Okay, now that I've sanded that down really good, really nice, close to the wood grain, now I am going to grab, this is, let's see, this is oatmeal, which is a very light, creamy color, okay? It's a step up from the, um, what you guys would know as the antique lace. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna brush out some of this um, oatmeal right over the top of my brown. It'd be really, really cool. You have some pieces you'd love to try the paint to redo. Oh my gosh, it is so easy, Melissa. I'm serious, once you start, you guys will vouch for me, right? Once you start, especially if it's in your blood, I'm just gonna tell you, it is like addicting, okay? You cannot stop when you see how cheap it is to um, just give a new piece some new life. And if you're staring at stuff around your home and you just can't afford to buy new, um, and you know, times are tight, whatever, or you're just trying to save for something else, don't buy new, don't buy new. Go find, some, uh, go find a piece that will work perfectly in the spot that you want it to, or take something that you already have and just paint over it. And here's the cool thing, this paint sticks to just about everything under the sun. So here's the thing, if I paint a buffet black, this is a true story, I painted a buffet black in my home and now I'm getting ready to paint it a different color because I want it to have a papa color, go figure. So just paint over it again and again and again, right? So let's see, Kim is here from Sarasota, Florida. Sonia, I think this piece of wood, two feet long by roughly one feet, one foot wide, maybe a little bit more than one foot. That's what, how long this one is. So now I'm just taking the brush and I'm giving it a brush over 
in our oh, oatmeal. I'm wanting to see some of that brown coming through, right? So my goal here is to create a piece that's manly, that's not too, too, um, you know, I don't want it to be too, too dark. And I'm actually gonna do one more step on top of this, okay? Because that's how you get distressed styles and get that distressed look. If you wanna imitate something that's distressed, just think about it in your mind for a second. The reason why it looks distressed to you is it's showing multiple colors. Maybe the, the paint is peeling and you're seeing the undercolor of the wood uh, that the paint was on. Maybe you see different colors that over time that it's been painted. But the fact that it's distressed is the weather has gotten to it and you're starting to see all the different colors come through, right? So this is where we are so far. How cool is this, right? Love it. Heck yeah, Anna. Totally repaint it and don't look back, right? Don't look back. And my husband will say, that was fine. Why do you want to repaint that? Because you know, you know what I mean, right? Sometimes you just want change. I swear for me, sometimes change it out, the most simplest thing in my home, makes me feel refreshed. It does, it makes me feel totally refreshed. All right, so I'm happy with that. So this was just a light color all over. Now I'm gonna hit my sides as well, just to splash on some. Again, I'm not trying to cover the brown totally. I want to have some brown and I want to have some of this cream. And then we're going to put on the final, the final. I got to get that staple out of there. Sometimes you get uh, pieces that have staples. I just get like one of those little um, staple removers at the dollar store. This one wants to come out, but not quite. So we'll pull them out after. All right, let's go ahead and put some light on the sides. So what's everybody doing today? It's about, I think right around 3.30 our time here now. So what time is it where you are and what are you up to today? Hey, Tanya. Yes, it is. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. You are almost dry brushing the oatmeal. Yes. Oh, did we get, the, I'm seeing mean faces. What's, what's up with that? Somebody having a bad day today? Good golly. Don't they know that, that this is my paint party? Like find a new paint party if you're not having fun. Oh my gosh, you party pooper. That's okay. We'll send love, send love. Send love to whoever is having a bad day today, all right? 250 in Texas. There we go, all right, I'm loving it, loving it, loving it where I'm at. So yeah, it's like mid-afternoon mid for a lot of you guys, right? Let me go ahead. I'm gonna dry this now real fast again. Let's see you. Gonna go watch your granddaughter's volleyball game. Well, I hope you have great weather. Well, I guess that will be inside, right, for volleyball? That's awesome. Hey, Amy, how are ya? Debbie's from Kentucky. You are gonna make a vanity, Debbie. Oh my gosh, you'll have to uh, post it in our, here on our page so we can get um, all inspired by what you do. Heck yeah. You're taking a break from yard work. Well, I hope there's some cold peach tea or um, you know, just to get some, some cold beverage in your future there, uh, Jana. <laughs> Anna, well, Matt, I either repaint or go on a, a shopping spree. This is true, but I'm gonna be honest. Matt pretty much knows me by now that, um, that my, my, what would it be, my vice, my, my thing is he could drop me off at a uh, thrift store and I will never come out for like hours, but drop me off at the mall, I'm, I'm in, get what I gotta need and get back out again, but there is something about when you go through a thrift store where I don't even care if I got anybody with me. When I'm out there and I'm shopping and I'm browsing, you're all up in your head, right? You're thinking like, you know, even if there is somebody with you and they're following you around, you're just all thinking to yourself, hmm, I could totally do this. What can I do with this here? Hmm, can this fit in my car? This is gorgeous. Is this a good price? So when I go thrifting and junking, it is like, you know, yeah, I could get lost forever. Kim, how are your online sessions going? I'm thinking you're talking about my coaching group. It is going awesome. For a long, long time, I have wanted to have a coaching group and be able to help other people. I've, I've had my business for eight years and I've learned a lot along the way. And I wish I had somebody on my shoulder um, helping me and saying, do this, Sonia. This is what you gotta focus on, okay? Here's how you price your stuff. Here's how you, you know, um, just kinda get mentally in your game of where you wanna be with your business and to be able to grow it and to turn it not from just a hobby, but to actually have, be able to have a business. So you guys know I was able to leave the corporate world um, behind, my husband, and we all work together now, but um, it took steps, right? It took work to get here, to be able to paint in my stretchy pants 
And so right now we have, every day we're, there's more and more people joining, but I think right now we have somewhere around 64, 65 people. And, um, and it keeps growing. I'm not sure how long I'll have it. Um, so if you guys want to get some coaching help, be sure ju to jump in. This is what I'm focusing on right now to help other people. Um, so yeah, jump in. I tell people stay as long as you want because here's the fun thing that um, I believe in keeping it simple. And so it's $14.99 a month. Jump in, stay as long as you want, and then unsubscribe if you feel like you've learned enough or if you want to stay connected and just kind of meet other people and stay connected and have um, the back end where we meet up and we talk business. You can do that too, right? Sonia says she's grateful for the coaching sessions. Ah, that is so awesome. Yeah, and yesterday we had two ladies in our group sell their first two. Our coaching group has been live for three weeks, and two people posted yesterday that they actually just um, – just sold their first two pieces and so I am so happy for them because I know that feeling right when you realize people like what I do oh my gosh I can really make money at this right they love what I'm doing so if you guys are somebody out there like that you just need some help and direction you can if you go to styleshabby.com and click coaching you'll find uh, some more information there but it's really really fun we keep it simple we keep it simple Donna says your doll helping people out. Donna, here's the deal. It ain't no fun being what's called a solo entrepreneur. That's where you keep all the information to yourself and you know what? You live a life of just constantly trying to grow your business behind the scenes and you really don't connect with other people. I believe in a different sort of business where I love to come on here and talk with you guys and help you guys and hang out with you guys. Seriously, it makes my day just getting to be on here and talking to you guys. You guys are awesome. Let's see, if you're a seasoned Etsy seller, will the coach, coaching help? Heck, yes, it will. Okay, so real quick before I go any further. So I take a rag, okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and spritz some water onto it, all right? Preferably, you want to use like a lint-free rag, and then I'm um, going to get it a little bit damp, not soaking wet, okay? So I just went ahead while I was chit-chatting there and put some brown glaze all over it. Now watch what happens when I do the rub. Here we go. Do you see what's happening now? Do you see the gorgeousness that's happening? So I'm, let me just get a little hold of my tail with my rag here. So now you're really seeing three colors. You're seeing the brown in the background. You're seeing the antique lace. I'm not the antique lace, I'm sorry, the oatmeal. You could use antique lace too if you want it. And um, now you're seeing the brown glaze. And so remember how I told you that to get the barn wood effect um, and to get that old, you know, it's been around for a long time, you're gonna to wanna to use a couple different colors. And I just love how everything's setting in it. Do you see how old it's starting to look? It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. And remember, this is gonna be the backdrop. And then um, we put the wording on top of this. Everybody's saying hello to you, Matt. Can you hear me? Do you have your headphones in? Can you hear me? You're, you're, really, you're trying to like be hiding in the corner? Matt snuck in and he's in the corner. <laughs> Uh, so easy, Jana. You don't have to go look for real wood. If you had to find real barn wood, I know because, you know, you pay a fortune for it unless you have somewhere where you can get it and they hook you up, right? So this is a great way to, like, create an old style look without having to pay a fortune because I just go by the pine wood and um, the pine wood is always on sale and different sizes and then just get what you need, right? what you need and you can get it cut at the actual um Home Depot store for you as well right everybody's saying hey Matt why do I wet my rag because it helps me keep like right now I'm going to go back over the glaze again and so it helps me keep moving my glaze where I want it to be so we make our own paint we make our own glaze and this is just the way I make the glaze to be able to control it better because sometimes you ever feel like you put glaze on if you've worked with other glazes and I know I have where I put it on and then it's like okay it just stays in one spot and it grabs in one spot and I want it to move elsewhere so a glaze is um, it's supposed to be a uh, something that goes on top of your paint it doesn't cancel out your paint but you can move it you can leave it into different parts of your furniture to make it look old like maybe you have detailing old detailing anything so I could wipe off as much as I want with my damp rag or I could keep it down as well right so you guys like how this is looking all right let me do a couple more swipes just to keep it nice and light got lots of browns going down browns going down right 
you'd like to do your, what is it? Your steel door like this, will it work? You mean like for your um, front door? Yeah, but when you're done, just seal it really well, right? Absolutely. This looks really good too. If you do it, um, if you do it with a wooden door, because I'm gonna actually do a little more distressing and bring some of the woods that, wood parts out on the end. So if you have a wooden door and you do this effect, bringing a little more of that wood through the actual real wood is absolutely gorgeous, okay? So let me dry this part here so we can start to finish up this piece. We do two, um, two colors of glaze, Carol. We have a black and we have a brown. And um, those are the most two popular colors in terms of why you would use antiquing. So antiquing is used to make a piece look old. And when you think about a piece looking old, it starts to blacken, it starts to darken, it's, you start to see the brown colors. So if you want to stay true to how to antique a piece, you're going to want to um, use the brown or the black. And a lot of times I'll use black glaze with grays, um, with like grays and things like that. But right now I'm going with browns, like a brown backboard and a warm color with it, a warm uh, cream color. I'm just making sure it's all dry. So I'm going to go with a, there you go, with a brown glaze. But it is a lot of fun. I think we're all dry. Everything we do is water-based, which is nice. So there we go. We are good, right? We are good. To go. I'm loving how old that looks. It's perfect. And uh, yeah, so just to kind of remember, this is just plain, plain Jane um, pine. Now I can go ahead and I can do a couple more swipes over that. Glaze is not going to come off or anything like that. And I can do some distressing around the edges as well, which I think I want to do just to kind of make it look a little more old and wretched, right? Glazes are $6.95. And so you like my leggings? Thanks, Dale. I'm that girl who loves color. So, um, you know, I can't resist when I see colored leggings, right? Can't resist. And my husband's over there, like, probably thinking right now, like, what the heck is she talking about? We like our colored leggings. What can I say? You can't wait to see the mermaid stencil? Oh, I have the mermaid stencil. I do. It's in my back room in there. I think I have it out here. Um, I love the mermaid, right? We're totally going to do a mermaid sign together. Absolutely. Hey, Linda from California. All right. Nice and smooth and flat. Because remember, we're going to put some words on here. So we want the words to look good, right? And stick on well and look flat. So this is our glaze. $6.95. It goes a long, long way. You can't even tell I use anything of this. And now let's put some words down. So, here is what vinyl looks like. Is this backwards to you guys? Tell me. Can you see this? I was messing with some settings before I came on here. Not sure if it worked or not. Facebook has changed some stuff around, so I'm not sure. But it says, so tell me if you can see it okay, all right? It says, if its and buts were candy and nuts, because how many people say if and buts, it would be Christmas every day. What do you, what do you think? What do you think? Yep, paint is. Oh, it's right. I did it. Oh, my God, I did it. All right, so anybody know about vinyl stickers? They're a lot of fun, and they're basically a big sticker that will go on to your piece, right? Your piece of furniture, you can design it in any way possible, and you basically pull it apart in two parts. So what I do is use my handy-dandy putty knife, the same one that I use when I'm scraping paint or I'm, um, you know, doing my, my raised stencils and things like that. I get these at the dollar store, three for a dollar, at the Dollar General. If you have one, it's my favorite place to go get these. There we go. Let's see. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad you can, Linda. Thank you so much. Yay. I'm pretty sure by now people probably think that my store is made up of nothing but backward signs. And I, prob I promise it ain't. I promise I can. I, I see straight. So now what I'm going to do, this is called, I think it's called, um, what's it called? Is it braising? I'm trying to remember. Braising is either something you do when you cook or burnishing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's burnishing, okay? <laughs> my husband's a chef by trade, so he's like, oh my God. Yeah, braising is something you do, I think, to beef possibly. Uh, burnishing is something that you do to uh, when you're working with vinyl, okay? So let me just make, make that correction so that, uh, but you can braise beef while you are burnishing people, you know what I mean? You can totally do that. So basically you want your sticker to stick to the front part and relieve itself from the back piece, okay? So you see this? I'm pulling it apart, right? And if I've done it correctly, it releases really nice. So now my sticker, I see you guys laughing at me. 
I see you guys laughing at me. <laughs> it's all good. All right, let's go here. What's it saying? You know, I haven't lost my mind yet. I haven't lost my marbles. Although some days, some days I wonder. All right, let's lay this down here. Here's where I kind of did the eye squint and think to myself, okay, as close as possible. I want all the words to lay really nicely. And the more you do this, the better you get. Uh, make sure that catches on the end. We look good there. And then you commit, okay? Then you commit. So you, if you have problems with commitment, vinyl might not be for you, okay? Because you have to commit. It's a big sticky sticker. So get seek help if you need help with commitment. Put your sticker down. Again, we're going to do some um, burnishing, not brazing, okay? Maybe later, if I drop enough hints, the husband will braise me some beef later, okay? I don't know. All right, now we're going to go ahead... And we're gonna make that sticker now take it from the back of the backing that it was on and make it stick down on the board. All right, what do you guys think so far, right? There you go, Linda's laughing. You're funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Linda. Exactly. If you wanna make these stickers, you would wanna get yourself a, the two popular ones are the Cricut or the um, the silhouette cameo so I have friends who have the silhouette and I have the Cricut um, or you can also find somebody who has one if you don't want to invest and kind of teach yourself how to use these because my friends I promise you you have people that you know in your community that um, are really good at what they do in terms of even like creating these vinyl stickers and if you go on your local sales trades once you can put a call out and say hey I'm looking um, to find somebody who can help me create a saying and then you don't have to worry about that part yourself right it's so easy hey oh let's see heat it up with a heat gun and it will come out better really cheryl never tried that before that's a good idea that's a total good idea look how nice this is coming off some of them do stick a little harder so you do have to to work your magic do you see how nice this is if i had to sit here and draw this out god help me i don't know i just might jump over a cliff so getting to um just use the sticker and I love, my, I love the faces of my customers when they come to a paint party with me and they see a sign that they signed up for and they're like, oh my gosh, they're all stressed out. And they're like, do I really have to like write this on a sign? And then they, and then they get there and I go, guys, I got you covered. I got enough vinyl stickers um, made for everybody. Then it's like, Whew, okay, this big sigh of relief, right? Uh, this is all Oracle, all Oracle, yeah. What's the number on the back of it? I can't remember. It is, for anybody who's looking for this stuff, um, you go online to Oracle. Let me see here. It's called Oracle 651, 651. Search for that and get the parts you need to be able to do this. But you're going to need a machine to cut it, okay? Because you design it in like a piece of software that you put onto your computer. And then you attach in a machine that's called a vinyl cutter. And um, there you go. And then this is what you do. Oh my gosh, this is so nice, guys. I can totally see a guy liking this. I'm so glad that we went with the, the brown barn wood. You guys ready to see it? And then just kind of give it a nice swipe over. Make sure all your letters are down. And look at this. You guys see it? If it's and butts for candy and nuts, it would be Christmas every day. And then we put the name of the, the author that actually came up with this quote, which I think is pretty cool. I would love it if you guys would take a moment to share this. Thank you so much for everybody who did. You've made my day. Seriously, there's almost like, there's like almost 500 of you watching here. Who knew at like 3.30 in the afternoon in Pennsylvania there'd be so many people available. I thought maybe you weren't, wouldn't be on today, but this is awesome. Cheryl loves her cricket. Heck yes, right? Oh my gosh, heck yeah. Um, and then I'm just gonna, like I say, just do a little more distressing around the edges. I don't wanna make, I wanna make sure the stickers don't come off. But I do like a little bit of a little bit of the wood to show through on the edges because it's barn wood. It's barn wood. You guys have a preference? Do you like the um, do you like the brown barn wood or would you prefer the gray? Everybody has their choices, right? Do you guys have a preference? What would fit better in your home? What do you think? Uh, thank you very much, Teresa. Karen says she loves, loves, loves. Seriously, so when you think about signs that you want, even for like for loved ones that you wanna wanna give them, I think that my customer is going out west, I believe, out of state to see her um, see her friend. He's man, and I think we we did. I think we nailed it right with with the the style font that we have on here, 
and go in with the old barn wood look. So I'm, I'll take a picture of it as well and put it on my page. So now I'm just gonna get it ready for her, drop it off to her so she can um, do what she needs to do and make somebody smile, right? Grace, talk to me with teals and green. Oh, that is so pretty. You like, there's my friend Clara Nicole. Clara, I'm on a live with my friends. Come on, Clara. You guys know Clara, right? She's crafty too. What gray shade would you recommend? If you're gonna do this um, in grays instead of browns, you could do it with, you could do, if you like especially this sort of look right here, you could do with a black velvet for your initial color down. Go over that with a very light gray, like 50th shade of gray, and then do a black glaze. And you would exactly mirror this effect, except it would be really nice into homes that are not necessarily rustic and wooden, but maybe a little bit, bit a little bit more modern, right? So there you go. That's all you gotta do. Yep, and you can put uh, Tiffany. You can put he um, hardware on the back. So I'll probably color. Just go ahead and paint the back here in just a second, just so that it looks like a really nice finished piece for my customer. Want to do that little extra? Go the extra mile and do that. But it's cool to think that this is what it this is what it is now, and this is what it was before. Just a plain piece of wood, right? You can just do so much when you choose to DIY yourself, right? But yeah, for a hanger, I actually get my hanger pieces at Walmart, and they give me um, like a couple in a set, and then right here it comes with the, what's called the, um, what's it called, the sawtooth hanger, I think it is. Is that what it's called, babe, the sawtooth hanger? And it looks like a hanger that's got the zigzags on it, and you basically put it down, you nail the two ends of it down, and then you can go ahead and put it on your wall, right? So I'm not sure how this person's gonna use it, because you can also just set it up on a shelf if you really want it to. Um, you know, you could put a bit of wire in the back of it, or sometimes I do signs where I actually just drill two holes, and put a little bit of um, like a, some wire right here would be really cool, like even some copper wire. You can put some rusty stars, you know, and if you, depending on what sort of um, a look that you want to go with it, right? It's up to you if you want to seal it. For an inside piece, you do not. Um, so it's going to stick on really, really nice. Uh, just be very careful. If you're going to seal a piece, I would seal it before I even put my, um, my uh, vinyl on because sometimes it can eat through your bit of your plastic. So if you're doing vinyl, it's really meant for the inside um, because it's a sticker, right? And stickers come off, come off in the weather. So there we go. I am calling this done. All right, I am gonna pop off of here, guys. Um, but I wanna say thank you so much for joining me and hopefully you've learned something today or got inspired and a twiner rope would be beautiful, right? But I'm loving it. You guys have a terrific day, and I promise I will talk to you again soon. Kathy, yes, the Cricut. That's the one I'm a fan of and that I know of, but there's also, um, there's also the Cameo Silhouette. So you can Google both of those. And I got mine through Hobby Lobby, um, but I think there's a bunch of other places. You might even be able to get it at Walmart now, so try that as well, all right? You guys take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm kicking off kitchen cabinets, and I'll show you what the before looks like, all right? Talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.